Hey, everybody. How are you doing tonight? Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, awesome. All right, so for those of you that are on here, I see a lot of you have just your name and not a um, video of it. That's fine. Um, you will, I don't know if you're able to see the video that I have going, the interface. I'm gonna be displaying the PowerPoint that was in the class setting. Um, so if you are calling in or on something that doesn't have video, if you're not able to see, you can actually get the PowerPoint from the class um, and download that and you're able to kind of follow along with that. The interface that we're using today is called Zoom. Have any of you used this before? No. No? Okay, no. Zoom is free. So for any of you that are in training or in classroom situations, Zoom is an interface that gives you 40 minutes with as many people as you want, up to 50 I think is what they say, for 40 minutes for free. Um, after that, it'll kick you off with multiple people, but you can do a one-to-one -one session for as many hours as you want. Then you can pay to upgrade, and then you can have as long as you want with multiple people, up to 50 again, I think. Um, so the department has one or two accounts that we kind of share. That's why my name is on here as Mike the Shriver and not mine. Um, I'll rename myself here. Um, but we share this account so that we're able to use this platform. Um, it's a little friendlier, I think, than WebEx. We are going to try WebEx at some point during the, the semester once they get me straightened out. Um, as of right now, they, don't, they didn't give me any um, login privileges yet. I had them last year, and I'm not sure why I don't this year. So as soon as they give those to me, I will um, test out WebEx, and we can see how you like this. A um, couple features of this that I really do like. Um, for those of you that are in educational or training situations, um, you can record with a Zoom session and it'll drop it out on your desktop in a file that loads up to YouTube pretty easily. Um, you're not limited on your time with that, um, like Screencast-O-Matic and those kind of things, if you wanna do screencasting, um, requires you to stop at 15 minutes and then restart again. So being able to use this allows you a little bit more freedom with your length of time. Um, the other thing about it is you can share a screen, as I'm going to show you in a few minutes, and that allows you to do um, a lot of different things. So just target one document, for example, a PowerPoint or something like that, and share it. Or you can share a web page, or you can share video and um, other software, things like that. So for people looking to make, make training videos, it has a lot of really nice features that allow you to um, do a screen recording, have a... A little prompter that well you can follow around on the page use a whiteboard effect those kind of things so for training and things like that it's a really nice platform especially like I said for the fact that it is free the bad thing about it is unlike Skype you cannot share files so there's the, the downside of it um, there is a chat feature in the bottom so for those of you that aren't familiar with this which is most of you um, along the bottom there is a chat feature that you can um, make comments or things like that over on the side, and everybody can see that. If you're on a iPad or a phone, if you're on an iPad or a phone, um, it does show up differently than on just the regular screen. Um, you can also do hands up and hands down, but I'd rather not. We can if you would like. Um, I can walk you through how to do that even. Whenever you go to, to um, do your chapter presentations, if you would like to use WebEx, if you're more familiar with that, that is fine. Like I said, they, they told me I should be up and running tomorrow. If you would rather try and use Zoom, we can do that as well. I can set you up with a Zoom meeting and give over the controls to you so you're able to um, share the screen or anything like that. If you wanna see more than just the person that is talking, in the upper right-hand corner, there should be a little grid. It's about up in here about a little grid right on your screen there. If you click on that, you'll see everybody's faces, not just the person talking. Since I'm talking, I'll have a green box around me. If you have a lot of things going on at your house, like people, dogs, that kind of thing, you can click on the mute button at the bottom, left-hand corner, and that will shut off your sound, and then you can click on it to turn it on whenever you um, want to talk or anything like that. If you need to step away or sneeze or something like that and you want to stop the video, for those of you that have a video on, there's also a stop video button. And it does that. Or you can turn the video on and let us all see you. 
Okay, so any questions about the platform that we're using? No? Okay. So for those of you that I can't see your faces and see you putting a hand up or something like that, you can throw things into the chat box. Um, and I can try and answer your questions as we go along with that too. So, hi everybody, welcome to 706. My name is Jen Weibel. I'm an assistant professor in the teacher education department at Central Michigan. This is my third year that I'm starting right now. Um, I'm coming out of 23 years in the classroom. I taught chemistry, physics, physical science um, at a high school in Boston, Pennsylvania. Punxsutawney, home of the groundhog. Any of you that watched Groundhog Day or February 2nd, you know, you are watching to see what the groundhog says. You know, the only real true um, weather prognosticator in the world um, was there. So at Central Michigan, I teach in the teacher ed department. I teach a lot of master's and doctor level classes, and I work with the STEM education students, and I work in the maker space downstairs as well, doing some research there and just um, doing some student engagement things, and I work with an ele elementary school that's local on the Leave a STEM After School program that was developed whenever I started. Um, so that's kind of what I do. I drive back and forth from Pennsylvania to Michigan almost every week during the school year. Um, my youngest is a senior in high school, and um, so I want to be home for him and also out there to work. So it's been a lot of fun. And I see some names that I recognize, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, some of you I think I had in 590 or 642 before. Um, emailing me is the best way to get a response. I am usually pretty quick on the emails. If I do not answer you in 24 hours, please email me again because we have a really robust spam filter now that seems to be getting any weird emails that are not seamish. And every now and then I'll look on my phone but need to do something on the computer. And that way, if I can, um, if I look at it on there, it doesn't show up as being needed read yet. And I, every now and then I will forget. So I try though to be lightning fast getting back to you on the emails because that's our best way to communicate. You can call me on my school phone or um, you can call me on my school phone. It will send me a voicemail. I'm not in my office very often. So the 989 number that they give you in the syllabus, I think it's in there, is gonna get you a voicemail to, that'll get sent to me. The 814 number is my cell phone. You can text me if you need anything quickly, um, and I can get back to you with that. Um, I've not taught this class before, so I'm only a little less in the dark on how the course actually goes with people presenting. Um, I've not had people do that before <laughs> in my classes a whole lot, so um, we're gonna test that one out. I'm fine with it. And the content is something I really think is, is fantastic for any field. So I know that some of you are not in education, but are in, like not in a classroom in education, but are in various aspects of it. Um, so because of that, I did change the syllabus. You should have all gotten an email that was in the course announcements that says, you are not gonna be required to teach your lessons in the classroom or in a training situation because there are many people within this classroom that do not have access to students right now. Um, so because of that, I'm changing the syllabus and, um, to allow you to teach your lesson with the class and that'll be your official teaching experience. If you have the opportunity to run any of these little strategies, even in like a five minute chunk of time, by somebody and use that as your write-up, um, I'll give you a bonus point every time you happen to have somebody that's real, real. Um, and I don't care if that's children, adults, your um, Boy Scout group, Sunday school class, um, drama team, whatever you wanna, whoever you have access to, whether it's in the classroom and you're training in a work environment or just a group of people that you happen to know, that are willing to sit through something, if you wanna test it out with them, that's fine. Um, I will, we will make it work, okay? All right, so I would like you all, if you're able to, just turn on your mic, say who you are. I'm gonna call names um, so that we have a little bit of semblance of order and just tell everybody what your name is and what kind of job you do or where, where, um, something along those lines. I know a couple of people have said that they were not working right now because of some various reasons. So I didn't want to put you on the spot with that, but 
Just tell a moment about yourself and we can move on. And I'm just going to go with the names that I see on my screen to give us a kind of semblance of order. They may not be the same as you have. All right, so Jerry, if you would like to give us a real brief introduction, put you on the spot being first. Hi, my name is Jerry Sloan. I live in Detroit, Michigan, and I work at the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History, uh, which is right in Midtown Detroit in the Museum District. And I do fundraising uh, stuff on the administrative side and um, just trying to learn more about education. That's awesome. I'm gonna write, try and write down what everybody's doing so that I can remember that whenever I'm trying to pull examples for you, try and help you figure out context. Okay, so Gloria, go ahead. Hello. Uh, hello. I don't think my. Uh, we can hear you now. We can hear you now. I have oh, my mute on. You me? couldn't hear me. Okay, I am like I can't even get to the right screen, but I will go ahead and introduce myself. Uh, my name is Gloria Lopez Green, and uh, uh, I'm at about my eighth uh, class in the master's program in education. I'm a substitute teacher. I have been for the last four years. Uh, I enjoy teaching elementary school. And this semester, I was lucky enough to find a uh, three month, uh, sort of like a contract uh, to work for third grade class. So I'm actually gonna be able to have a chance to apply the strategies uh, on real students. And I really look forward to, to learning more in this class. I took a class with, I can't remember the professor's name, but we used the text by Marzano uh, with uh, 42 strategies. Uh, and so it just, you know, being in this class kind of reminds me of, of uh, the topics we also had in the other class. So uh, I found it very interesting um, and I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Awesome. And Michelle. Yeah, hello. Um, my name is Michelle. I am actually, this is my last semester at CMU. Um, so I also have the 760, is that what it is? Or a 770 class right now? Um, so I work with the medical students at CMU. Um, I am at the Saginaw campus though and um, I'm a medical simulation specialist so I work with all the mannequins with programming them and running them and everything that they have to go through for training before they can practice on real people. So I live in Gladwin. Um, it's about an hour away from main campus and an hour away from Saginaw so yeah. I'm a tech person and I can't remember to unmute my mic. Um, go ahead and tell me whenever I make a mistake like that because I'll be talking and you'll not hear any words. Um, that's awesome, Michelle. I am a, a tech person within the department. That's primarily what I teach in. So that would be um, something that's very interesting to me. And Curtis, you're next on my list. All right, hi guys. Uh... I'm Curtis. I'm a third grade teacher uh, in the Kersley District, which is in Flint, Michigan. I've been teaching there. This will be my fifth year now, uh, teaching just the general subjects. This is my eighth class, too, I believe. I've got this one on top of 776. And then for the second part of the semester, I've got one more, and then I graduate hopefully in December. So nearing the end of it, I'm pretty tired today. I'm trying to give it my all, but I've had a class with PD all day and getting stuff ready for the classroom at Open House tomorrow after a 12 hour day. So I'm, I'm kind of tired, but I'm ready to be here. So nice to meet everybody. Awesome. And Neil, you're next up. Hi, my name is Neil Karsten. Um, I just moved back to Michigan from California. I'm now teaching at the Potter's House in Wyoming, Michigan. 
in California, I was doing chemistry and physics, uh, but now I switched over to biology and human anatomy. I'm pretty far into my classes. I think I have two more after this. Uh, yeah, looked like a good class. I enjoyed the first chapter, so that's always a good sign. Awesome. Uh, Danielle, you're next on my list. Hello, uh, my name is Danielle Argenbright. I live about a half hour south of Mount Pleasant. Um, I teach third graders and it's my fifth year, so very similar to Curtis's situation. And I also am almost done. I am graduating in the spring. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm happy to see so many of you are getting close to the end. This is great. All right, Tristan, you are next up. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Tristan DeLong. I'm a middle school math teacher working out of Detroit, Michigan with the Phelan Leadership Group. They actually just took over the school I was at previously, so we're in the middle of a transition right now, and that's just all kinds of fun. Um, this is my first year actually with the grad program. Well, second semester, first year, but that's just splitting hairs. And I'm really looking forward to this class. Awesome. Christian? So I was having troubles figuring out how to unmute too. <laughs> um, hi everybody, I'm Christian Kendrick. I am from Stockbridge, Georgia, which is about 20 minutes south of Atlanta. Um, I teach um, high school math. i um, been doing geometry for uh, quite a number of years now. This is my 12th year teaching. Um, still early in the master's program. This is just my third class. So um, got a little ways to go, but it's nice to meet everyone and I look forward to working with everyone. Awesome. Uh, Lori then. Hello, my name is Lori. I'm entering my fifth year teaching. I teach middle school, uh, seventh and eighth grade social studies. Uh, this is my second year doing that. Prior to that, I taught fifth grade in a different district. I'm at uh, Derby Middle School in Birmingham, Michigan. Um, and I'm still new to the master's program as well. This is my third class. Well, for those of you that are just starting out, the rest of them in the class can give you hope that you're going to be able to finish it up pretty soon. All right, Erica. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Erica. I am a second grade teacher at Inland Lakes. It is maybe a half an hour south of the Mackinac Bridge, so I'm way up north. Um, this is my third class in my, towards my master's, so I'm at the beginning of my master's journey. Um, but yeah, I teach all subject areas. We just had our open house tonight, which is always crazy. It always flies by, but I'm super excited about this year. So, and I'm excited to have this class. That's great. I miss open house. <laughs> and Kate, you're next up. Hello, I'm Kate. I'm from Michigan. I taught in Detroit and Southfield for about five years, but my school recently closed down. So the good thing is I don't know what to do with free time. So in my breaks, vacations, summers, that kind of thing, I always work at a preschool. So I'm back with my preschool kids, pre-K. And uh, I'm three classes out from finishing up. It seems like everyone's either three classes in or three cl classes till we're done. So I'm one of those on the way out. That's great. Um, Taylor. Hi, my name is Taylor. I am a third grade uh, classroom teacher. This will be my fourth grade, fourth year teaching. Uh, after I graduated from my undergrad from CMU, I taught in Mount Pleasant Public Schools for a couple of years at Pullen Elementary. And now I teach um, in the Brighton School District. And I'm about halfway through my master's. I've taken six classes so far, so I think I have seven left. Okay, um, Heather. Hi, my name is Heather, and I teach college reading and our first year seminar at Jackson Community College, which is where I live, Jackson, Michigan. And I am actually in my last semester as well and taking 776 with a couple of you. So 
I look forward to finishing up and uh, moving on. Okay, um, Christine. I, <clears throat> excuse me. Hi, I'm Christine. I um, actually do work at CMU, and I'm an executive secretary. Um, I'm, I have three more classes to go and to finish my master's. I basically took this to get um, for the curriculum aspect of it, but I'm in, enjoying the instruction part of it, um, mm -hmm. and I'm looking forward to taking this course. I'm glad you're all looking forward to taking the class. That's great. Uh, G. Conley. I'm not sure what your name is. So, Hello. Can you hear me? Awesome. My um, first name's Greg. Uh, this is, I teach for a sixth grade math teacher. Uh, this is my third year teaching sixth grade math, uh, going into my 13th year overall. I teach for uh, Kip Philadelphia Charter Schools. Uh, very excited about taking this class and increasing my instructional practices and looking forward to learning from everybody. Awesome. And then Brenda, you're the last one. So go ahead and introduce yourself. Title one teacher for five rural one room schoolhouses. Uh, and there are actually five within a 20 mile radius of my house. Um, and I have previously used the textbook classroom instruction that works, but the first edition. So I'm looking forward to, and hopefully I'll find the second edition just as helpful. And I'm very pleased to be here. Thank you. That's great. Um, all right. So with, Without further ado, I'm going to go through the PowerPoint a little bit with you. Um, like I said, we're changing what we're doing slightly just to um, provide opportunities for people that are not necessarily in a classroom situation right now to not do the teaching. You will be still assigned a chapter. It looks like you will be um, paired up with either um, one or two people with you um, in the chap for the chapter because of the number of students in the class. Um, rather than having you sign up online tonight for this, I will post this within the class. I'm writing it down so I don't forget. Um, I will post the sign up within the class. It'll be on a Google Doc kind of thing um, that you'll be able to go in and sign up for a chapter. Um, chapter two is taught next week, so um, those of you that want to get it over and done with, you can go ahead and do that pretty quickly. Um, and those of you that want to kind of pace it out, there um, will be opportunities every week for it. It'll just be first come, first served. If you do have a problem with what you get stuck with, if you're the last one um, signing up or something like that, please talk to me about it. Um, the couple of you that I've had in class know I'm pretty easy to deal with. Um, if you let me know that there's a problem, we'll take care of the problem. And I will work my, do my best to make things work for you, the students, because this class is for you. It's not for me to you know, have at my convenience. Um, the class time being 8 to 9 tonight, I realize that sometimes that's not a great time for people. If you are having issues, let me know. We can deal with that. You can miss a class and just take a point off to teach a lesson, and that makes up your point for you. So I think that'll work okay for you. Um, all right, so for those of you that want to know how um, for your, your presentations as you're going to be doing this, um, to share the screen in the very bottom of your screen, if you're on a browser, there's a little yellow or a little green folder with an arrow going up that says share screen. When you click on that, it brings up everything on your desktop. So if you're like me, I have, I think, seven or eight things open on my desktop, and you have to pick between them which one you want. Um, so, okay, this is the, and I'm minimizing all of you now so that you, I can see what's going on with the screen. So, there. And you can minimize people or move the, the list around by clicking on the um, top of the little column of pictures that came up with people's faces. And you can pick different displays for that. So right now you can see the PowerPoint that was um, able to be downloaded out of the class shell. All right. So basically, this is an overview of the class. You're going to be looking at different strategies you can use within the classroom. 
picking them apart to see how they fit into your context and then trying to apply them. Um, there's also a PowerPoint in there about theory and practice of instruction that I want to take a real quick look at with you as well before you're, we're done tonight. And then I, um, and from that then, you'll be able to, if you're not able to see the, to, to do the lessons with people in class, you can really look at how the specific strategies align with the different theories of instruction that you've had in other courses. Hopefully you've had that already. Um, and that will allow you to um, link those together and then your reflections will be good enough, it will be robust enough to count as the ones that if you had done your instruction as well. So within the text, there are nine different strategies that are in there. Um, as Brenda said, this is the second version of it. Um, if any of you have any questions or want to know more information about something or pop in with anything, just unmute and go ahead and talk. I don't mind it at all, okay? Um, so within the text, we are looking at nine different learning strategies and people use these then to um, do things within their classes, to help people learn, to make the learning more robust and the learning um, better for the students. And when I say students, I mean anywhere from PK up through college age, work-related, work um, adult learners, any of those kind of things. These strategies have been proven to work well with them. If any of you are familiar with Teaching Works program, if you've ever heard of that, for those of you that are teachers or educators, Michigan State runs a Teaching Works program that talks about um, high leverage practices. And a lot of these teaching strategy, strategies that we're looking at within this text also align with those. Um, if you're using, I don't know what kind of framework you're using for your, um, those of you that are in a classroom to be evaluated on, but a lot of the Danielson strategies and the um, and that will also line up with, with the strategies that we have in here that you can perhaps use those to make your lessons that you're being evaluated on a little bit more robust as well. For those of you that are in work situations, um, a lot of the training that we talk about here can also be applied to adult learners or to learners within a workplace. Um, you just have to kind of stretch your brain every now and then to think a little bit more carefully about how you could um, make it engaging or assessing and things like that. But a lot of training happens and you all know you've sat between, I'm sorry, you've all sat in terrible training before, I'm sure, and you don't want yours to happen to be that. Okay, so the learning targets, there are four of them that are listed within the book. Um, knowledge of students learning, acquiring and integrating it, practice review and apply, and how do you know if they've learned it? So the, the strategy that we're looking at this week is setting objectives and providing feedback. These four targets of learning broke, are, can be broken down into these four areas, and you can see them listed there. These strategies have been proven by research to actually have measurable gains within a learning setting or learning environment. And you can see them broken down here, the percentile gains that they've actually seen um, that have been measured within different types of research, not just the research that is in this textbook, but Marzano um, and other leading educators that um, are, are doing research within classrooms and publishing in journals and things like that, these are values that have been distilled from those. So, sorry, within the class we're gonna be working, I'm not touching it. <laughs> within the class, we are gonna be working on um, two different things. We're going to be working on the declarative knowledge, which is what you know and are able to, to um, organize and write about, those kind of things, and then procedural knowledges, which are ways that you carry these out. And that's why being able to teach these lessons, even if you only do one or two of them, is going to be really valuable for you because what you think in your head is going to happen does not always happen whenever you're playing it out in the classroom. So if we're looking at Chapter 1, we're looking at setting objectives and providing feedback. So uh, most of you that are in an educational setting will probably have some information already that you've learned in your undergraduate program on setting objectives. Um, for those of you that are not, I will post another link up that has a couple of things about setting objectives and writing objectives that may be helpful for you, especially for those of you that are early in the program. Um, if you've not had an educational background, those might be pretty helpful for you to think about how you would want to set your objectives and, and create those for this. And I'm going to stop sharing on here. And 
going to move to, I'm going to try and move to this. Zoom isn't liking it at the moment. It doesn't want to. Let me do this. Okay, so I'm going to try to make this full screen. I do not know if it's going to let me and still share. Are you still able to see this? Yes? Yes, we are. Awesome. Okay. Um, we tried it with some statistical software last semester, and whenever I turned the software on, it shut off your video. So I'm just making sure. All right, so setting objectives, you were really looking at the goal that you want to have the students do, what you want them to achieve. And feedback is your way to kind of coax them along the way. So when you're looking at this, setting your objectives, what you really want to be looking is at the end result. What do you want your, your learners to be able to do at the end? And the feedback is kind of the coaching that you're going to do to be able to get them to move carefully towards where you want them. Um, I'm skipping through a little bit here. So your objectives are really gonna give you direction to your learning and the feedback provides the guides so they can change it. So it's like you're having um, Google Maps and your end destination is what you're setting, that's your objective, where you want to get, and the feedback is the turns that they have you going the whole way there and how it readjusts your drive as you're moving along so that you're able then to get to that end place that you need to be. All right, so um, using firm objectives that have been set, especially when the students know them, they have a goal to their learning, has been shown to really give you um, an increase in learning gains I've heard in other studies around 25% than if they have not been used. Um, so this is just giving the student a kind of a, or the learner a place to kind of situate their learning in, in the, within their head where they're going and be able to have an idea what their expected outcome is supposed to be. Okay, so this is focused a little bit on the classroom, but you can also apply it to any other situation. So, Whenever you're trying to set objectives within the classroom, you want them to be specific. They should know exactly what they're supposed to be able to do, what they need to know. They need to be shared with the learners, connect to their prior knowledge so that they have some way to bridge what they already know and what they're supposed to know. And if possible, they should be personalized where they're able to have a reason personally for them to do that or also you're able to differentiate the learning so that the students can get to the specific place that they need to be. And I don't know why this is doing this. Hang on. Sorry. This is why I don't like Prezi. Okay, so whenever you're giving practice, um, whenever you're doing feedback within the classroom, you want to be able to guide them to knowing what's right about their work and what's wrong about their work and what they need to do next, especially to be able to improve. It should be timely, meaning that feedback that I give you in two weeks is not going to help you for your presentation for next week. Um, having a rubric or a way to design the outcomes that you want the students to have and for them to know what you expect is one way that you can help them have feedback, almost like almost pre-feedback because they already know what they're supposed to do to achieve each of these levels before they start the project. And then you want to engage them in the process. Um, working collaboratively is, collaboratively is a good way to do this. Having the students design your levels of mastery is also another way that you can engage the learners in the process. So today's learners, And I went really, I don't know why this is doing this. Okay. Hopefully nobody's getting seasick here. It's providing the support and the tools. Um, you're looking at, with your, with your objectives, you're looking at the story of what they want to be doing. This is one way that you can provide objectives for them, is with a graphic illustration. Pictures can also convey a lot of the information that you need them to have and technology, and we skipped right over the other one. Um, and working with peers, 
I'm sorry, this is jumping all over the place. Um, working with peers is another way. A lot of you have heard of think pair shares. There's a lot of ways that you can do a think pair share quickly and quietly within the classroom or within the work environment. There's also some technology that can support you with that. So that's another way that you can give feedback is providing opportunities for students to give feedback or learners to give feedback to each other. Um, so when you're looking at these, you can use all these different methods to provide feedback. You can have them look for mastery where they do it until they get it right. You can provide feedback ongoing using either technology or verbal. Um, you can use thumbs up, thumbs down, nonverbal communications, all those kind of things. Um, by using a journal, you're able to have students reflecting on it and provide them feedback that way. And you want to be sure that you are giving them things that look like you want to see it in the end project or product, and that allows them then to have kind of a goal to shoot for, which ties in not only to the objectives that you're starting at the beginning, but also the end product that they're able to produce. Sorry. All right, so since I'm a technology person, I will be adding in some technology resources for you as you go along that may make your, um, that you may not have known about for setting objectives and providing feedback this week, I'll be putting a few links in there for you. Um, as we go through the other chapters, even though you will be teaching the other chapters to the class and I will pre be providing some reinforcement for you, um, I will drop some technology links within the classroom as well um, because to be an effective teacher leader at, these, at this time, for those of you in the classroom, I know that that happens to be in your observation framework. Um, for those of you in other settings, a lot of times that's the best way that you can communicate with people. Um, I'm thinking of Jerry with the museum. A lot of times you're going to have to have technology to assess what's going on in there and to support this, the people as you're moving through. For those of you in other settings um, that work with a lot of technology, having some of these tools that you're maybe not familiar with maybe be beneficial for you as well. If you want more or less, you can let me know. You can just not click the links if you don't need them. All right. so. I am getting out of this. All right. So within the presentation and the Prezi, it talked a little bit about objectives and feedback. When you're setting an objective, you want to know who you're dealing with. You want to know the action that you want them to do, what they want, you want them to learn, and the criteria for learning. So as you're setting these, I'll drop a link in that has a, a, um, a couple things for Bloom's taxonomy which talks about higher level learning, lower level learning, um, and also some technology that'll support those. I'll put the links in the classroom for that for you. So do any of you have any questions about setting objectives? No? Okay, that's great. All right, so the learning theories that are within the classroom, um, there's learning theories listed within the classroom shell. There are, um, they're called Theories of Instruction with Notes PowerPoint, and it talks about um, the different theories of learning that you would have probably talked about within um, some of your other classes. Um, as some of you are really beginners within your program, you've only had a couple classes, and I am not sure which classes you've had already, um, the Theories of Instruction might be really beneficial for you. Um, for other ones that have had more of your coursework, then you should have had several classes that have mentioned, you know, Skinner, Vygotsky, um, constructivism, or, or um, the information processing, those kind of things. Um, those are beneficial whenever you're trying to design your learning environment or trying to design the learning experience that you want your students to have access to. Um, looking at whether you want them to um, just be responding to a prompt, um, kind of Skinner-like, or whether you want them to be um, collaborating and creating these social environments where they're building the knowledge together. So just be thinking of the learning theories that you've had. And those of you that have not had the class yet that really talks about learning theories, if you have questions, let me know. And we can um, make kind of a extra help session and we can talk through some of them if you really have um, a little bit of confusion on that. Um, I'm not going to make you sit through the PowerPoint on it because you do have access to it. If you really want me to though, I will. You know, everybody speak up if you want that. 
Um, all right, so what we will be doing then after this is you will be this week trying to look at um, setting objectives and providing feedback. You can do one or both of those. For those of you that are not in a classroom setting, it might be really easy for you to provide feedback in different ways and not worry about the setting objectives so much. I am fine with you picking one or both within your lesson that you guys design. So there's a download for the lesson template. Um, it has a sample one filled in already for that. Uh, on the first page of it, when you scroll to the second page, you will um, see an empty one. It will expand as you type, and that's where it gets longer. So it looks like it's just a grid with um, little teeny tiny lines right now, but as you type, it'll expand, and that'll give you your place to put in your lesson plan. Okay, so I will put the sign up for you in the class tonight. You'll be able to sign up for your chapter. Is there anyone that has any questions? I have a quick question. Sure. Um, I actually start classes with my students next week. Is it possible okay. to do this next week with them? I'd have to do two. I'd have to do this chapter and the next chapter, but I'd really rather do this with the students than just, mm -hmm. is that okay? Yeah, sure. Okay. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I'm fine with that. And any of you that have a similar situation, if you ever have, you know, you miss class a day because there's a fire drill at the school or a bomb threat or something like that or whatever and it pushes it to the next day and you don't get it done before class, just let me know and try not to get behind because this class does have a lot of stuff built into it um, over the eight-week period. Anybody else have any questions? Hello? No? Hi. Go ahead. Hi. Uh, do we have to write a reflection on the uh, non-linguistic summary? No, and that's a great question. Um, the non-linguistic summary is just a pictorial, pictorial representation of what you think the chapter means. Okay. So you can do that on the computer, you can draw it out by hand. If you draw it out by hand, I suggest that you take a picture of it with your phone, because I'm sure most of you have a smartphone, or hold it up to your computer like this and take a picture. Email it to yourself, or um, if it's on your phone, and then you can easily upload it into the class to turn that in. Okay, thank you. Okay. Sure. <clears throat> Any other questions? Okay, well I really th appreciate you all giving me some time tonight, and every night this, this um, semester. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, if there's any questions, like I said, email me or text me and I will get right back to you. And I also have office hours um, on a Zoom link, uh, usually after this class. I'm going to try and run them from 9 till 10. Um, at least try that this week. So if you have anything that you want to discuss that's within this class, you can either hang around at the end of class when everybody exits and talk to me, or you can drop in to the Zoom office hours. And those will change this week. They're 9 to 10 this tonight but I'll move them around so that people that do not work on our normal schedule of eight to five have um, access to office hours as well. Okay. All right, well, it was a pleasure meeting all of you and I really look forward to seeing what you're doing this, this um, semester with these different strategies and in, in your instruction. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. To get out of here, you can either close the program or down on the bottom right hand corner, you can click end meeting and that'll let you exit the program. Thank you. Thanks.